I'm gonna show you a little behind the bow. This is generation one of the new knock-on and bark that I've partnered with PSE for. This is a passion project of mine because I've always really wanted to come out with just the best bow in that mid-range price so that people getting into archery or even people that are already in archery can just get an amazing bow packed with a ton of features and really try to maximize the precision, maximize all the features, and maximize the accuracy at a price range that's just gonna allow more people into archery. This is Gen 1, and I'm gonna do a little bit of shooting here and kind of give you a look at how this came to be. This first model, these are actually stickers right here, just to give you a little look. When we're concepting, you don't have the graphics yet, so these are all just die cut stickers that are on the limbs. But it at least lets me go through some of the initial setup, tuning, check some of the feel, and be able to give some of that first feedback to the engineers so that once the final one comes out, we just have just a killer setup. This thing is just gonna blow people away at how it feels. The draw cycle, taking, in my opinion, the best cam system on the market, changing it slightly for this model and giving people just awesome feel and awesome performance. This thing is showing some great speeds out of the gate. It's a really forgiving brace height. I mean, we've really thought this through. First in, doing pretty awesome. So this setup is a hunting setup, hunting arrows, five pin sight, large peep. This is just how people are gonna take it to the field. But what an awesome package. Pull these arrows. I'll give you a rundown of the very first ideas and the way this all came to be on my chalkboard. For those who know me, you know I like chalkboards. That's where I brainstorm. So this whole thing came to be after the very first model that I did in collaboration with PSE, which was the NTN, just a flagship high price point bow that was packed with a ton of features. But as I continue to shoot that, and throughout this year, I've thought about what bow do I wanna come out with next? And although there's been an incredible amount of people that have talked about you know, bringing out another high-end bow or a target model, my passion is really growing archery, coaching, and getting people into the sport and keeping them there. So I would like jot down concepts before I ended up taking these original concepts to the engineers to tell them what I wanted this Embark to have. So some of those key points that I would write down looking back was one, the price. I really wanted this to come in at a price that was in a range to where you didn't feel like you were getting a low end bow that you'd have to trade back in and continually upgrade and lose money off a resale of a lower end model in order to get up into some of those better features, which I think are critical to accuracy and precision. So I wanted it to really come in at a price range. The goal is gonna be in a retail price at about $7.99, so we'll see where that falls, but that ideally is a number. And it's important whenever you're going, you're kind of reverse engineering in a way because obviously cost is intuitive to design and what you take to the market. So if you come out with a bow that's just awesome, but then it costs you X amount above what it's gonna to need to sell for, then it's kind of, again, counterintuitive. So 
knowing that number is kind of critical when designing and starting to work backwards of what can we make for that type of money. And the other thing that's gonna be important is on the, the flagship models, you've got a lot of variation in the cam system. You can choose different modules, you can choose different let off settings, and all of those features are cost because they have to be machined differently. So I want a bow that's got one cam system that is gonna feel good. I want it to be legal in all states, so it's gonna need to come in at that 80% let off so that it's, got, it's legal. And because of that, it's gonna have to be a new eco-friendly Evo or Evolve type cam system. So with the PSEs, the Evolve type cams have split harnesses on both sides, which I think is critical because when you look at the other bows that are on the market that are mid-range bows, um, they're using a cam system that has a single bus cable system. So where you have just one split at the top, like on some of the hybrid systems, that one, what they refer to as the power cable, that one cable will have more weight being held on it, you know, whereas the control cable does not. Whereas with the Evolve type cam system, you really do have two perfectly mirrored cams. Now, even with PSE in the past, the budget bows that they had had a hybrid or you know a hybrid type cam system so it had a split yoke on the top but just a control going down to the bottom i really wanted to be able to let people experience the feel and the tunability and accuracy of that evo style cam so we needed a new cam system that was going to fit that budget and then also for me a critical component to all the bows that i'm going to be part of is gonna be the forgiveness of the brace height. So the distance between the inside of that grip to your string, that's your brace height. Because when you hold this bow and you shoot it, having a string that has a forgiving brace height or gives you enough space here to where it's not going so far forward that it's hitting your arm is really important, especially when you're looking at people that are gonna be new into archery or getting into archery, having a forgiving brace height that's generous, that's not gonna be you know, having people that are a little bit more on the beginner or you know, maybe even an intermediate level where they're not gonna to have to experience hitting their arm because they gripped the bow slightly wrong. And the other thing that's gonna be critical for a bow that's in this price range is I wanted a bow that not only would cover a vast number of people with a, with a large uh, spectrum of jaw ranges. You can see here, there's not even numbers yet on this cam. This is you know the number one off the line, but we're looking to be able to get you know maybe even seven inches of draw out of one cam system to where you can just you know loosen two screws, move your module, you're gonna be able to go hopefully from anywhere from about 23 inches up to, I'd like to get 31, we might not be able to get there, um, but that's also what I'm looking for. And then obviously you wanna still be able to have performance and speed within those ranges. Now when it comes to the actual riser, um, I'm not a good drawer, I'll admit that, but you know, some of the first concepts were just like, what do I kind of want the overall look of that riser to be? Um, I'm really passionate about having that dual tap, which is an added feature to the NTN model, uh, but I'm hoping that we can add that to this so that you have two uh, burger bolts that are locking that rest down into place. And then obviously being able to cut this out enough to where you're able to get that weight down but still have the strength that you need within that riser. I was, again, adamant about that seven inch brace height. I still wanted it to be able to come in at like 320 feet per second minimum. It'd be awesome if we can get over that. Um, and then just talking about that pocket angle of, I really wanted that pocket angle to lay back more to where I could get these limbs more at a 40 degree angle versus 45, which is what the angle is on some of the current prices within this, or bows within the same price range. So I really wanted that 40 degree limb just for feel and also how that bow responds at the shot and you know, just lack of vibration, awesome feel, super quiet. 
And then again, with that cam system, I just really was wanting it to go down to at least like, you know, 24, 23 if we can, see how much we can get out of it, that 80% let off. And then when it came to axle, axle length, obviously we had a couple different ideas on that, but I wanted something between, honestly, 30 to 31. The final axle to axle length here is actually 31 axle to axle, which is awesome for using in the blind. It's also still awesome to have a great string angle. So even at my longer draw, right now in this prototype, I feel like the string angles fit in my face really good able to get the string to my nose. And then honestly, one of the things that I started with was that name is I just felt such a need for people to be able to experience, to go out on their first backcountry hunt, go out on their first archery adventure, go out on their first whitetail hunt in a tree stand. And I just started thinking about names in here while I was shooting and, and, and bark was just that name. So before this bow really ever even came to fruition, the name itself was such a huge part of the concepting, just embarking on that. So this right here is the first result of ideas on a chalkboard, some brainstorming in the archery range. And I think people are gonna be super happy with it when we get this all finished up.